Ting drinking is very bad. Yo, I got a fake ID though. Yeah. I'm not a personal trainer, athlete, or professional of any kind. I'm just one small toodle-doo who used to hate exercise, knew only a self-abusing, self-punishing relationship to exercise, and then accidentally, without even knowing it was possible, I learned to love it. Here's what happened. Two step, one, here comes the two to the three to the four. Everybody drunk out on the dance floor. Baby girl ass jiggle like she want more. Like she a groupie and I ain't even know. Maybe cause she heard that that rhyme hardcore Or maybe cause she heard that that buy out the stores By the mother ninth in the city got the score If not I gotta move on to the next For the longest time, exercise for me was punishment a disciplinary action, something I could do to myself to handle all my guilt. I dreaded it, I hated it, and I did it regularly. I regularly did a thing I hated. And what is the point of that? Over the years, my habits around exercise slowly changed and so did my feelings about it until eventually exercise became something that I now genuinely crave. Just going for a walk. Still do something good for my health and my mental attitude. I'd successfully rebuilt a positive relationship to exercise, but then things changed again. When this past summer, I had a knee surgery that put me out of commission for about five months. By the time the surgeon cleared me to resume working out, I found I had no motivation to do so. I'd lost all my momentum. And all of a sudden, I was forced to remember what it's like to start your exercise journey from zero. This video documents me after surgery, slowly rebuilding my fitness habit over three months. It made me think a lot about motivation, momentum, and habits. How I gained all those things, how I lost them after my injury, and how I slowly rebuilt them. This is what I learned. First, we gotta talk about motivation. When a fire starts to burn. I find that motivation has two parts, long-term and short-term. If you're watching this video, you probably already know your long-term motivation. I wanna exercise for my health, for my kids, my sanity, my sobriety, my vanity, my own sense of accomplishment, whatever. And that long-term motivation is the spark that gets you going. But eventually, we all hit a point where that spark dulls and it's hard to keep going. So long-term motivation is great, but it usually doesn't carry you all the way through. After surgery, for example, my long-term motivation was to regain my agility. In the macro view, totally, yeah, I want that. But right now, this afternoon, uh-uh, I'm busy. <laughs> so figure out what your short-term motivations are. What gets you excited about exercising today? What's the reward today? If I wanna make exercise a frequent habit, it has to bring frequent reward. I have lots of short-term motivations. I know that a workout is the fastest way to restore me to sanity after staring at a computer for 10 hours, short-term reward. I attend cycling classes with my friend, not because I like cycling classes, I do not, but because I love that we have a coffee date afterwards, short-term reward. I know that putting on a cute workout outfit is gonna make me feel adorable as heck, reward. Find the short-term rewards, short-term motivations, and you'll be more likely to reach that long-term goal. My dad always says the hardest part of going to the gym is going to the gym. Whether you exercise in a gym, in the park, or at your friend's place, the hardest part is showing up. But if I can get myself to just show up, then I will almost certainly do something once I'm there, even if it's just 20 minutes of something. Great. So work on removing the obstacles between you and getting to the gym, whatever your gym is. I know that if I sign up for a gym that is more than a 15 minute walk from my apartment, I will not go. I know that if I have workout clothes that don't make me feel cute as a button, I won't want to put them on. If I sign up for a morning cycling class, but I am not a morning person, guess who's probably not showing up? Make it as frictionless as possible for you to show up there. Once you make it easy to show up, you'll likely do something once you're there. Girl, make sure you got a great playlist. It is so important. I will share mine on Spotify. I have two main workout playlists. One is basically 90s, 2000s hype dance music. Anything that will get me dancing. Fantasy. Tell me how you want it. Three, two, one, and I'm on it. Feel good, don't it? Good chick. You 
in a bunny. Yeah. I'ma bust it on the pole like onions. Don't you being honest? Juicy, mini made, uh -huh. but can't do it one mini man. Uh -huh. Not a side or a main. I'm the only one he entertain. Spinning his mind in the bank. In the bank. The other kind of workout playlist I love is like cinematic, dramatic. It makes me feel like I'm in a movie, and I also love it. I will link it. You'll notice this YouTube video is not monetized because I used all this music in it. So I won't be making money from this video, but I don't care. That is how much I care about getting a good music vibe when it comes to exercise. I could not not make this video featuring Tipsy by Jay Kwan. What's the false narrative you've written about yourself? I'm not athletic. I can't build muscle. It's selfish to take time for myself at the gym. It's not likable to spend so much time investing in myself. What's the story you've written about yourself? I bet it's not a nice one. How can you correct it? I used to have a really hard time working out because I thought people would call me selfish for taking 40 minutes for myself. Not a good story. When I started physical therapy after knee surgery, I caught myself thinking, sure, these rehab exercises work for other people, but they won't work for me. I, tr I literally thought that. What is the story you're telling yourself and why? You deserve good things. You deserve to invest in you and you deserve to feel good. That is the truth. The rest is just a story. Get really honest about what kind of exercise you enjoy. Every single one of my friends loves spin classes, and I'll do it with them because I love my friends, but spin is not what gets me excited. It just doesn't. I have rammed my knee into the stationary bike one too many times. Forget what's popular. What kind of exercise do you actually like? These days, I personally love solo exercise. It's my meditation time. I do strength training and light cardio. But I only learned that by experimenting with all of these exercises on the screen. Do you like instructor-led workouts or solo? That was a big switch for me. When I first started out, it was really helpful to have instructors to learn proper technique and how to push myself. But now that I'm very aware of what my body can do and how to push myself, I don't seek instructors as much. I definitely don't like the kind of instructors that yell at you, but I don't even really like the ones that encourage you. I just want to be left alone. That's what feels empowering to me. So now my growing edge is for me to be my own instructor. I'm the one who decides when to push myself and when to pump the brakes. That's what it feels empowering to me. And it's just a personal preference. There's no right way. There's just whatever feels most empowering to you. not a personal trainer or fitness professional at all, but find the people who are. I love Natasha Ocean's YouTube channel. I don't know how to pronounce her name, but her content feels like a warm freaking hug. It's so good. I also do use one service. It's called Copilot. It's like an app and it gives exercise ideas, guidance and technique. And I like it because there's a personal trainer available to you, but they're not like watching over you while I work out. Like I like to be left alone. But I'll give you one more night. Most importantly, I really have to find good role models for myself. Exercising very quickly can turn into unhealthy body fixation for me, so I find it really helps me to follow fitness influencers that have my actual body type, a type that encourages me to lean into what's special about me. And it's not so much about their weight, it's more about their body type or proportions. I've learned I'm prone to unhealthy fixations, so following people with my body type helps to keep my goals healthy, attainable, and positive. Before I become
Okay, you're working out, you're doing the thing, now what? These are some guides I set for myself. Nice. They're completely made up and they're totally personal. If they resonate with you, cool as heck. If not, sweet. It's just stuff I'm saying in a YouTube video. For me, I usually try to average around six strength exercises per workout and a little bit of cardio, even if it's just my jog to the gym or five minutes walking on the treadmill. I really try to release the all or nothing mentality. If all I can do is 15 minutes one day, great. 15 minutes is not nothing. It's not worth nothing. It's great. It's I'll still feel better after. And most importantly, it continues my momentum. So I actually feel extra proud of myself when I do 15 minutes on a day that's really tough. Your goal can be just like getting to the gym. Just get there. Make your goal bite-sized. Another completely arbitrary rule that I use to balance pushing myself with being safe, if I decide to do three sets of 15 reps each and I get really tired, I try not to stop in the middle of a set. I try not to stop, unless I'm gonna injure myself. I try to finish the set and then I can evaluate whether I can handle another set. But I try not to stop in the middle. That's important to me because as someone who's inclined to over punish myself, I do want to still push myself, but I need to have parameters for it. And most importantly, break all the rules when you need to. Don't listen to my rules, I made these up. For me, setting my own rules has been the most empowering thing, not listening to someone else's. I really value perseverance, being uncomfortable, and doing hard things, but even the healthiest habit will sometimes require you to take a break, to fall out of the routine. This was absolutely the biggest game changer for me, because falling out of the routine is actually part of the routine, because life happens. So change how you think about falling out of the routine, and allowing yourself breaks accomplishes two massively important things. It protects exercise as something you just love, as something you just have positive associations with. If you always send your kid to the basement for time out, they start to have negative associations with the basement. Don't let exercise be your disciplinary tool. Protect it as something that lifts you up. Protect it, take time away when you need it. That way, when you go back, you're going back to this thing that you've only ever had positive associations with. Taking a break is not only healthy for your mind and body, but it's also an opportunity to build faith in yourself. Self-esteem is the reputation you build with yourself. It was really empowering to me to build a reputation with myself as someone who can be trusted to take a break and still return. It's literally an opportunity to build your faith in yourself. Breaks, vacation, burnout, it'll happen. Don't make the mistake of doubling down and beating yourself up for it. A quick note about vanity. Hello? I wish I was a little bit taller. I wish I was a baller. I wish I had a girl who looked I know it's uncool these days to say that you exercise for any reasons other than your mental health. But I think it's okay to acknowledge that it's okay for vanity to play some part in exercise. We allow room for vanity in our fashion, in our makeup, but somehow we can't say that it plays into exercise at all. And I just find this damaging because I think it's untrue for most people. Vanity can be a factor, but it can't be the only factor. And of course, excessive vanity comes at a great mental and emotional cost. I know that better than anyone. <laughs> I can be very vain, and I think it's more responsible to be upfront about those emotional and mental costs. It comes at a cost. So just don't beat yourself up for a little vanity. It's very human, but make sure there are other motivations in there as well. I wish I was a little bit taller. I wish I was a ball. If motivation is the spark that gets you going, momentum is what keeps you going. But the big mistake is to wait around for momentum. Momentum comes as a result of doing the thing. So when you start on your fitness journey, your momentum is zero, and that makes everything way harder. I often take breaks away from fitness, and when I return, those first three to five workouts are gonna be way harder to motivate for than the next five. I find the trick is to just acknowledge this, just know it. I acknowledge that those first couple workouts aren't gonna be accomplished because I'm on a roll. There is no roll. The role does not exist. They're gonna be accomplished 
just by sheer brute force, which takes the most energy. But somewhere after that first week, I'll have a little momentum under me, which then makes each subsequent workout easier and easier. All this to say, I just accept that the first week or so feels like nothing. I feel very little reward, but for that first week, I just do it anyway. And then things start to change. I could go on and on about exercise tips and guides, but really the only thing that matters is this. Be nice to you. Slow down, you crazy child. You're so ambitious for a juvenile. But then if you're so smart, tell me why are you still so afraid? Mm -hmm. Be nice to you. It's hard to form a habit. If it wasn't hard, no one would be watching this video. But this is something that everyone struggles with, even when we know the habit is good for us. Obviously, it's not that simple. Be nice to you. Take breaks. There is more to life than getting the habit right 100% of the time. Kick off before you even get halfway through. Ooh, when will you realize Vienna waits for you. There's more to life than getting a perfect score. There's a lot going on. When I do show up to the gym, it's probably because there's a ton of crazy stuff going on inside me that I have nowhere to put. I have to get it out. I have to put that energy somewhere. There's a lot going on. Be nice to you. You're doing a good job. Though you could see when you're wrong, you know you can't always see when you're right. You're right. You got your passion. JK, we are not ending this video on that note. Go, 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 go. All the tips in this video are changes I made just because they were practical. I had no idea they would completely change my relationship to exercise for the better. After four months of filming this video, I am feeling great and I'm feeling alive, baby. Thank you for coming along. Go do something that you enjoy. When I pull up out front, you see the Benz on do. Uh -huh. When I roll 20 deep, it's always...